computer. All right. So who wants the first one? Ah, let me make this bigger. Do it. Okay. Uh, when in her. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when in her. Uh, Sebiat im sen. Um. So then Horace laughed. Laughed at them. I'm not sure about im. I think so. Yeah. Like like imasen laughed laughed at them. I think that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Um. Should I keep going? I keep think going. so. Mm -hmm. Um. When in her her irat ang and mm. and nature. Um. I'm Jed. Uh, Aja. Mm -hmm. uh, pa Jed. Neb Suter. Uh, Im. Ash to and Ta Metut. And Suter. Uh, Peter. Nen. Pa Neti. You said. Usheb. Ushebit. Mm -hmm. That's a really long sentence. Um, Want to break Im, that? Im em tu ash en tai inak peter nen paneti you set ushebit im. Wow. Okay. Well done. So, then Horace um, made an oath mm -hmm. to the god. Um, saying, uh, uh, it's a lie. Um, the everything that Seth has said is a lie, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, uh, cause to be called, um, the semen of Seth, um, and we will see, um, the. This one's tricky. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, okay. I think I know what this is. It's saying we will see uh, where it answers from, but it's we'll see the that which it answers. Yeah, we'll see where it answers from. Uh huh. So call to the semen of Seth, and we'll see whence it answers. Um, nice. <laughs> uh, Ash and to, and call to mine. Um, what's with this Thai and Enoch? Wouldn't it just be Thai? You're right. Why why so, the two pronouns? Just to, to emphasize it, to oh, okay. to mine the one of me, so to say, like like my very own one, um, if you wanted to make it okay, a bit more okay. something of that nature. Okay. Hi Jonathan. Uh we are uh, Hi. uh line six right now, just near the beginning. Um Thai Enoch. Uh, and we will see, um, and we will see where mine answers from. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great job. So, yeah, like you said, really long sentence. Um, so Horace is making an oath to the God. So far, so good. And saying, okay, so that's that's simple, right? That's just a normal adverbial first present. Um, and you, you eat a, a, um, an anash, a, an oath. Um, so far, so good. In saying, saying, um, aja pa jet neb sutech. What do you make out of that grammatically, you think, out of the pa jet neb? Uh, oh, God, I never know what grammatical terms are. Is this a, a um, oh, God, what do you call it when you use a verb that way? Par participle? No, Similar. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's a relative. Um, relative, that's that, it. That which, um, that which has said, it's interesting that the neb comes in between. I would have thought it would be like, I would have thought it would be jet sutech neb, but it isn't. It's uh, jet neb sutech. The, so that, that makes sense to me because it's all that he said. Mm -hmm. it's his sayings, all of his sayings, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? It's modifying the jet. Right. Yeah, you're right. So the. Because then it would be all of Seth if it were after Seth. True. That is true. Right, there would be like all the sets, right? If there's more than one. <laughs> okay, true. 
And then next sentence. Uh, it has an imperative a, in there? Oh, sorry. It's an imperative. Ahead. Yeah, okay. imperative and ash to. That's that passive, um, the, the impersonal pronoun. So I always translate those as passive. That's right. To be called. Um, to, to be, to be, to be, to be it's interesting you call here. to the, the seed of Seth, enta, yeah. enta matu. Enta matu mm -hmm. in sutech. Mm -hmm. And then we shall but, see. It's a um, uh, um, oh my god, <laughs> uh, Sejmeth, the um, uh, can't remember the word again, uh, subjunctive but, or perspective, subjunctive, mm -hmm. uh, oh, perspective, I... perspective, sorry, perspective. Um, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, Palmetti, we've seen a million times. You said, and then it's just really the same sentence again. That's right. The only other just thing I would the, call with out subjects reversed or objects reversed. You got it. And the only other thing I'd call out is there's a conjunctive in here. Oh yes. And um, wait, what was it? And one shall call out. Um, he's using the M two form here. M two two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, really good. Um, Chris, I know you have to leave in a few minutes. Should we do one more sentence uh, by you and then we do the hieratic in one go? Or should we look at the hieratic first? Yes, let's, let's do the sentence. Okay, all right. So great job, Aaron. And let's do the next one and then we mop up the hieratic. All right, so we have, so we have when in Jehuti, mm -hmm. Neb Nature, Medut, and, mm -hmm, Wait, yeah, yeah, Medut. And then we have Sesh or Zechau. Mm -hmm. And we have a feather here. Is this Zechau? Um, shoe? No, what's after it? Could be Shu, or what's the other thing that's spelled with a feather? Uh, Maat. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Maat. Oh, okay, yeah. Maat ni Pesajet. Her wa. Deret F. Mm -hmm. Perka Niheru. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're going to go on. Niheru. And then we have uh, UF Her Jed. Mi Er. Uh oh, this one of those. These things always kill me. It's an L in here somewhere, right? Boo, boo, bell. Uh... Uh, Ebol. <laughs> From here to oh. here. The whole thing oh. is. I mean, in. in... In late Egyptian, they transcribe it as Erbena, but it's really later Coptic Ebol. Uh, it's the whole thing, basically. Tabitut. Tabitut, yeah. Nisitesh. That's right. Then keep, keep going. Sure. Let's go to the last, uh, to the next red part. Okay, next. Uh, okay. Then we have, um, <clears throat> we have EU set. Mm-hmm. Washeb, Washebet, NF, Mpa, Muhen, Mu, Mu, Muhen. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mu, M, Henu, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mu, M, Henu, Pa, this is Anbat. No, not Anbat. This is, um, is this ready? Yeah, R N. That is indeed a bar. Uh, R N Banet, literally. Um, I'll. I'd have to look this one up too. I remember what it's supposed to mean, but I don't know uh, that word. Banet uh, is uh, is a location, but I'm not completely sure what it is. Maybe uh, and so so that so that that uh, I lift that R arm is not it's not uh, abbreviation not abbreviation but it's not ready it's it's R N Banet. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, All right. Great job. So what do you make out of that? All right. So we have, so then Jehute, Lord of, I guess, words. Oh, well, well, Medu, well, yeah, Lords of words and writing and truth. Wait. Um, almost. Almost. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. So Lord, so we have Lord of writing. So we have Neb, Netcher, Lord of the gods, Lord, not gods. Lord of the God of writing, 
No, that doesn't make sense. Um, it could be. Honestly, it could be. But uh, think about this. How um, hieroglyphs, um, what's the, the Egyptian word for it? Um, medu nature. That's right. And where would you put the nature? It would come, it's in front. It's, it's that graphic, a graphic. It's the graphic transposition. That's right. Mm -hmm. So it's really uh, Neb Medu nature. Neb Medu. See, yeah, we don't see like this in Middle Egyptian. Wow, it's Neb Medu nature. Okay, Neb Medu nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All so right. Could, so it could be the Lord of the Holy Words or it could be the Lord of Hieroglyphs, I suppose. I think yeah. the translation I saw was the Lord of the. The holy writing, uh, yeah, holy divine, words. Normally, it's Lord of Divine Words. Yeah, yeah. I think that makes divine more sense. Divine speech, something like that. Mm -hmm. Lord of Divine Speech. Let's go with that. I like mm -hmm. that. Lord and he, he's the Zichau, uh, Zichau Mat. Um, true scribe. Could be. Could be true. Or scribe of truth of Could of the be. gods. Could be true. It could be as well, right? I mean, often for scribe, you'd have like a little A1 man or something after the the secha. It's not here. So but could it be of true writing like you had? Maybe. Ah. I, I'm not sure, honestly. Mm -hmm. All of that could make sense in the uh -huh. absence of a of a determinative, unless that's like a fixed title of uh, of Jehuti. I honestly don't know. Yes. Okay. Of the Pusajet. Mm -hmm. And as we have here, I don't know if I said Wa or Sa. Uh, wa. Wa. Here, Wa. Um, what is Wa? Something. Um, um, to place, to put. It's a place to put. Okay, so a place where he put his hand mm -hmm. um, upon the ga, Gahan. Gahanet. The, the shoulder. The shoulder. Okay, upon up the shoulder of. Horus, mm -hmm. and he said, mm -hmm. "Come, wait, no, yeah, come, right, yeah, come." And he said, "Come," and this word. He, so, what is it again in 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 Coptic? I need to take Coptic. Ebol, ebol, and it means out, outside, come out. Mm -hmm. And real quick, could you elaborate on the? Because my my first instinct is to go boo boo in air. <laughs> Sure. No, absolutely. So here's the trick. Um, hang on. I'll do this backwards. This is a good point. Mm, annotate. Text. Let's see if I can format this like left to right. Give me a moment. Uh, right to left, I mean. Manually. Mm, so the thing all the way at the end, that's an A in Coptic, the R. Then the boo is just basically like a like a B letter. That's it. It's just it's they're using the the common um, syllable boo like you have for example in place or in the mm -hmm. one of the negations. They just use it to spell the letter B, and then um, the N and the R together are used to spell an L. Um, okay. It used to be that the R the 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 mouth glyph basically. Uh, could be somewhere between L and R, because when you look at, uh, at transcriptions from Semitic, I think it can stand for both, if I'm not mistaken. But in late Egyptian, when they want to indicate a syllable final R, so let's put it this way. In Middle Egyptian, whether it's R or L, you'll always just see the the, the mouth, the mouth glyph. Um, in late mm -hmm. Egyptian, they're changing that. In the syllable onset, beginning of a syllable, if you want to write an L, they still use the R. Um, but at the syllable final, uh, like in Baal or something, if you want to write a final L, uh, they basically write a combination of N and R together. So this is really, if you read it from right to left, it's a ball, oh. um, and the rest is just determinatives. And this is a place, this is a... It it means outside, basically. Um, so properly in Coptic, you write it like this, and it means just out. It's the, um, um, the equivalent of English out, outside, to the mm -hmm. outside. Okay, so come out. Mm -hmm. And then we have the sperm of Satesh. Mm -hmm. And it was Washbet. Um Washbet. Answered it. Wait, Washbet. Answered. Mm -hmm. That's right. It, answer, it answered him. <laughs> Perfect. Well, and it answered to him. Mm -hmm. Um in the water mm -hmm. fluid, in the water. 
of the interior or no yeah i guess huh that's right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the water of the interior i don't mm -hmm. know yeah no that could be uh interior of what par a and barnet Perfect. so i see the determinative for bone yeah isn't it mm -hmm. or or a, a fish um bone um ebal and not ebal um and but yeah i don't know this one and i don't know this one either does anybody have that one and i looked it up but it still seems weird because the determinative wasn't the one i found but it's cucumber so i think like the arm oh, of a cucumber is like i don't know i guess they referred to it as an arm a cucumber but isn't that super weird Cucumber. It's very weird, <laughs> but I guess because he, he's. I mean, he likes veggies, no? <laughs> yeah. Unless this is some kind he, of... he did. Isis took this is Seth's semen. She had taken it and put it into his vegetable garden, right? So right. I guess it makes sense that it it grew up inside of a cucumber. And not quite, not quite. She threw it into the sea. Actually, remember? Um, she cut off horse's mm -hmm. hand and she threw it into the water. So that but didn't it. she put she put his semen on? Oh wait, that was on Horace. lettuce. That was Horace. Lettuce, on lettuce, right? Yeah, but of her son Horace, not of Seth. Right. So let's oh, yeah. Have... Okay, so yeah, that... I don't, I don't know. Then it's weird. It's kind of weird. Uh, let's have a quick look if what Ramses online thinks what this is. Um... Okay, I'll, I'm about to go. You have to. Okay, okay have fun. <laughs> it will okay. be the video. Have fun. Okay. Enjoy Bye. the movie. <laughs> Thank you. Um, geez, where is this? Uh, oh. Now, here we go. M. Geno pa a le parti, okay, de concombre. I'll be damned. And de fois, no less. <laughs> Yeah, indeed. So they really mean it. Now they say a l'intérieur du marais of the swamp. Um, but apparently this is also weird to the Ramses guys. Well, that's yeah. cool. L'intérieur du marais. I'm a bit lost on the context here, but... <laughs> <laughs> You're not the only one. <laughs> Even with context, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Ish. Where is my file because thing? cucumber, this is why I was confused because I looked it up, but cucumber has a different determinative. So I don't know if it's just a, a homonym and it means something totally different. I don't it know. It could be, right? Um, let's restore the context. So context was the two of them, um, Horace and Fest, basically after that, that whole uh, assault thing and essentially uh, messing with where the seat of somebody goes. Um the next morning, Seth proposes that uh, they should go to the, the court and uh, come to like a final verdict. And once in the court, uh, he basically opens up to the whole whole Inayat that he has had Horus basically, that he performed the work of a man on him. Jesus. <laughs> and um, basically then that therefore Horus is unfit to, to, to be the king, right? Um, so he should get precedence. He, Suthek. Uh, and uh, now the next thing, then basically Horus objects. He's just laughing at them and says, "Well, let's let's ask for set a seat where where it's coming, where it is at." And uh, Jehuti says, "Yeah, let's just do that." So um, set a seat. Where are you? And then basically it answers from the R in what's the word again? Uh, ba Banet, right? Bandet, uh, yeah. So the magic question was, "Where is that?" And I can. I remember distinctly that before that, uh, Isis had thrown it in the water somewhere. Um, yeah, you're right. But some water. Okay, think. that kind of makes sense that it perhaps grew into a cucumber. <laughs> Does <laughs> Ellie cucumber have a fit. translation of this? That's where I was just going to go. Oh, yeah. If I can remember where they are. Um, stories somewhere. Stories and poems. There you go, Ellie. If he also has cucumber, I give up. <laughs> What would be a, a good keyword? Ah, I'll just try to find it like this. Horace and Seth. 
Um, no, not six five. Eleven five, getting closer. Twelve. Okay, here we go. That one may. Oh, we're already so far on page page twelve. Yeah. I didn't even notice. Um. Et esoli rispose dall'acqua in mezzo alla palude. So same idea, um, swamp, but why swamp? Here we go. A en Bennett, la regione di termine oscuro. So basically obscure word, we don't know what it means. Um, il Wörterbuch riporta un banet or Bennett, a type of um, a type of field, an art von acker. Rimanando a badet. That's it. Okay. Ayuola di verdura. I don't know what ayuola is. Okay. Lichtheim traduces as, it as marsh. Um, Gardina fa inoltre presente che il significativo del gruppo finale twice e oscuro. Hmm. Okay. So uh, some kind of... If I, why water then? Perhaps it's sort of... Um, yeah. <laughs> collection of weeds in the middle of a pond or something like that. Now that is true because the traditional Egyptian house, I think I mean you have the main house with its pillars and everything but if you're a bit richer, having a garden or a vegetable garden and a, a pond those were things that you wanted to have because it's refreshing in the summer, right? To have a pond in the um, in, your, in, your, in your backyard so to say um, so it could be Maybe that's that's what's next to the um next to the vegetable garden. That actually makes some sense. Apparently there's some water around. I don't remember it being mentioned before though. Let's see what happened there. Um ba, 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 ba. or maybe it's just like, you know, those the cinema buffs like to do that continuity glitch in movies, like that's a scene that ended up on the cutting floor. Um, so she let out a great cry, and then she took her knife and yeah. uh, cut off the, the hand of, um, of her son Horus, right? And threw it into the water and uh, fashioned him a new hand. Doesn't say where, though. Mm -mm. Okay. Okie doke. <laughs> so far, so good. So this one is a bit of a mystery. The water in the middle of the R in Barnet. I guess we'll just have to accept it. It's some kind of location. In any case, not from Horus, but far away. Mm, what else could we point out here? A few interesting things. Uh, so come out, come out. That's easy enough. Um, and then the, the worship, uh, you say worship, you, S worship. Interestingly, there's a final T. I don't know why, because worship is a strong verb. It does not have a, um, a weak infinitive ending. But for whatever reason, the scribe thought that there should be a final T, which makes me wonder if it's more something like washpe, if there's like a final vowel that he's trying mm. to indicate. Could be, but such such misspellings could be interesting. Like, why are they there? Um so it's grammatical. Uh, is it she cried out? So the sperm is feminine. So yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. As you can see, so from it's, not, the... it's not it, it. It is she. It is she because yeah, there is okay. no it, right? So um, in in late Egyptian, it's either masculine or feminine. So it's not it. It's she. Um, and yeah, the seed is uh, is feminine. Um, where do we go? Yeah. So that's one. It's simply an infinitive. So a um, a historical use uf chersegem form basically. To him, uh, m. I would say this is actually from that funny thing that in Egyptian m can uh, can be um, either in or from, and that those two prepositions are basically the same thing. So it answered from the water, from the water m genu pa a in Bennett. I would say let's leave it at that and look at the hieratic, unless there are any more questions about this sentence. I would only add that Gardner has put 
two question marks on that septsnu. So he's um, puzzled by that. Uh, the last, oh, the, um, the septsnu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That doesn't. No comment, just two question marks. Just two question marks. <laughs> I mean, I sometimes wonder, and I have no idea if that's true, but if this were like an orally presented text, somebody is reading the story, are you just supposed to repeat that last? And it answered from the water, from the water. It's just like for dramatic pause, essentially, almost like like stage instructions. Um, Maybe. I would say that. It answered from the water. From the water. Yeah, because it's so amazing. <laughs> right. Like from the water. The right. water. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Yeah. I mean, it would make some sense, right? For dramatical, dramatic emphasis. I get that. Okay. Anything in the hieratic? I guess we have to go all the way back up to the top. So, no, not in when in uh, One more. The middle, the other one in. Oh, we missed this? That okay. one, yep. Let's see. Um, anything special here? Sebiya. Sebiyat. Kind of hard to read here. Um, big A one man. Imasin. Um, when in hor her ire. No, I think that's reasonably clear. Um, Anash. I've always found it interesting how small the loop is in the the Anach sign in uh, in this kind of hieratic. Uh, let me make this a bit bigger. It's really just like a little tick, right? A tick, then the big crossbar, and then the the horizontal, the vertical. You don't really get a loop here in earlier hieratic, maybe. Uh, Anach, a two man. Um, our God here, um, Jed. Aja, Aja, good to see this again. I always forget how to write this in hieratic. Um, this uh, Aleph bird is really, really tiny. You basically have to know that that's what it is. Um, two verticals. Probably some kind of uh, W is what I think that is. Pa, Aleph, Jed, Nim or Nib, I mean. Lord, Nib. Uh, all, I'm sorry. Oh, not Lord. Um, we had all this. Um, Ima Oshtu Entamatut. I think we had all this, so I'm not going to go into detail. Um, but uh, with this funny spelling that we've seen every single time he does that. Which doesn't really completely line up with uh, with the the hieroglyphic transcription, but it is what it is. Like, I mean, this is the TR. It's just really glued into one single glyph. TR, read leaf, and then the ter again. Uh, nun with a double N. Ah, NT, you say worship. Hang on. Come on. Sorry about that. Worship. There's clearly a T in there, unmistakably. Um, in two, two. In two, two. Yeah, huh? interesting how that is spelled here. In two, two. The second two is ligature. Osh and ta. Tai. <laughs> um, then the Anak or yeah, Anak he's writing just with the Nu and the K. Okay, good enough. Petrinan or well, Petrien, I guess that's just a single N, even though you spell a double double N. Pa et Iset Worship Worship it. Oh, that's interesting. That's even um, to the point of there being a vowel. Here he's he's even spelling um, a double reap leaf, which is kind of weird because um, you say air worship. This should be a future future three. There should be a little R in between. So 
that it will be answering from. That's the only tense it can be. It doesn't make sense to have a her. Um, so that must be a missing R. Uh, I find it interesting that he's spelling the infinitive now with an extra double read leaf. I wonder how that was pronounced. Um, and im. Okay. Oh, and then we had this also. Um, when in Jehuti, Jehuti, excuse me, and uh, um, Madhu Nachada. Yeah, this is how the Madhu is spelled. Really, Omed, really simple. Um, yeah, I think I'll just let that stand as is. Uh, Sechao is strongly abbreviated, but that's normal. That's what it always is. Um, I think we've talked about the feathers before. So I'm not sure if there's much to say. Stop me if there's anything we need to go over. Triple plural stroke. I don't think we had the wach yet, did we? This is new. Take a quick look at that. Glyph number. <clears throat> Glyph number is that. One of the S's, I think. Where are you? No, V. V29? Oops. Okay. So this makes a lot more sense. But that is Middle Kingdom. Hmm. All right. So it becomes something like a little loop on top. Little loop and two side arms. Can be really huge as well later. That whole thing on top becomes really fanciful. Hmm. Not bad. So which one did we have? Let's take a look at that again. Yeah, more like very, very polite little loop on top and this plant looking thing underneath. Okay. All right. I'll try to What is it that. supposed to be? Um it is this thingy here. Um this pronounced uh Wach, and in Coptic, that would later be Wach. Um, yeah, right. but do we know what it is? Is it... Oh, some kind of... Oh, what is it? I, I'm not sure. Some kind of twisted twisted rope thingy. <laughs> it says mop. <laughs> I don't know. Egyptian Swiffer. I really don't know what it is. Um, we could check what Gardner thinks. Excuse me. Oh. A straw broom. Okay. <laughs> right. I confess I struggle to see that, but all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I must admit I'm not fully convinced either. A straw broom. Uh, hang on. Um, polychromatic. 
I can never remember that name. Chrome Hieroglyphs Project. There we go, PHRP. V. Here we go. A swab made from a hank of fiber. Okay. Oh, this one's nice. Okay. Yeah, maybe. definitely have some sort of room or mop or cleaning tool. Some kind of thing, huh? Of that nature. Could be. Huh. Okay. Cool. So that's what this is. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Um, Dantev, his hand, her kachet or kache or something like that, and Horus. Oh, did we get that one? Yes, we did. Um, you have F her jet. Um, this ligature again for Ma, uh, Amui basically, or Amu, Amu e bol. Amu e bol et matu en sutech ese washem ese washem ese washem naf em pamu em genu beautiful longen em genu pa pa what pa a en Interesting. So that bar bird looks a lot like our normal, like our normal pa, right? It just seems to have something else on top here. I guess. What should that look like? Mm. Bar bird. Which bird are you? Your flamingo, where's the bar bird? Am I blind? I see Gem, I see Za, I see that. Is that it? No, not really. Gosh, this is embarrassing. Ah, there it is. Uh, G29. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a bar bird in the beginning doesn't have wings unless the par doesn't have the wings at the back. It may have legs. And now we're getting into the range that we're looking at. So apparently it can have a little crown on the head. They have that here for the third intermediate period, but ours already seems to feature that. Interesting. If I go back to our text, there clearly is a little something going on on the head of the bird, um, but no wings. So that would be a good way to distinguish it from the, from the par bird, which is very prominent being wings at the back. Interesting. Um, then there's a big determinative stroke and something, yeah, and the bones. And that's it. And then the seps now. All right. Do we want to do one more? Jonathan, you want to take one? Uh, I can try. All right. Uh, so when in Jehuti, Herjed, no, yeah, that was a wrong sentence. Uh, there. When in Jehuti her um, wah wah uh, 
Det F her Kat en Z en I O F her Jed Ma I The feminine determinative still belongs to the to the me or or ma. Um, and then I need to move the screen. Mm -hmm. sure. And erbol. Mm -hmm. uh, me, medut. Mm -hmm. And horus. That's right. So then Jahuti uh, put up his hand upon the shoulders of Set. Mm -hmm. And he said... Uh, come outside the seed of Horus. Mm -hmm. That's right. And um, Coptic likes to put the article for vocatives. I'm not sure if Lady Egyptian does that as a rule, but it seems to do it here because it's really come outside. It's an imperative. Come outside, comma, um, the seed of Horus. In other words, old seed of Horus. Okay. Wanna go on? So when in S her jet and F and E E I Tenu Mm hmm is the power bird is that a part of Tenu? Mm hmm It is. It's always in there. Don't ask me why. Uh so then she said to him. Ah, this the seed her. I shall come outside. Not out, but tenu is where, or maybe in this case from where. Okay, so I shall come from where. Mm -hmm. That's right. Like okay. where should where should I come out? Or okay, that's the that's the question. Um, it's asking. Yeah, mm -hmm. perfect. All right. Um, I think grammatically, there's not much to say about these sentences. They're all pretty straightforward, right? I'm a bit surprised that there there's no from here. Would have to check how tenu is normally constructed. If that, I thought it needs some kind of extra preposition if you want to say from where. But I mean, the meaning is clear. Um, this you is have the R after the I, so perhaps that that does it. Not really, because this is a, it's a good question. This is a, um, a future three, um, I think. Um, I am going to come out where, basically. This is a, an immediate future, so to say. I am not certain. Uh, we could take a quick look. Mm, here we go. Itenu. Or Chenu. Yui er i Chenu. Paru i rej. Where am I coming? Or through where? No, from where, right? In English, we have to say from where. From where do I come out? Will I come out? Yeah. I think I'll leave it like this. One more? Okay. So when in Jahuti, Herjad, NS. My mm -hmm. erbol and Mister uh, It's not Sajum, so it, it is it is pronounced. You know what Mister is? Master. Uh, no. Uh, ear. Yeah. Okay. So Mister F. That's right. Simple as that. Okay. So then. Jehuti said to her, come outside the air, his ear. Mm -hmm. That's right. Come outside his ear, or from his ear. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. And this time we have a purpos uh, preposition here. I'm assuming that that's M mesger, but not the initial M of mesger, I think. Um, let's get a second opinion on that. Um, Evol M mesger, mesger F. And for some reason, again, the scribe thought there should be a T in the middle. Okay, um, good enough. Should we leave it there for today? We could do more for my sake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Is it the hieratic or 
do you have to be somewhere? I don't have to be anywhere, no. Um, we can do the highway, right? I don't think there's going to be anything uh, earth shadowing in there, right? Particular, yeah. Let's take a quick look. So this is all familiar. All familiar. All familiar. The abbreviated jet, not the full form. The abbreviated ma. I think this is normally. I mean, I really honestly don't care what kind of vowels we put on there. I, I make half of them into pseudo-Coptic anyways. Technically, I think this would be me in uh, late Egyptian Egyptological transcription, M and a, and a um, Y afterwards, mm. me. In Coptic, it would be Amu, um, whatever you want to make it. Yeah, I always forget that the A is not pronounced after M. <laughs> yeah, it's just a way how to... How to spell M and why they did that, I'm not sure, honestly, what the, the, the benefit was. If it means anything or if it's just a graphical thing that they got used to. Ebol or Eben Erbene, technically. Tamatut En Hor Wenin Herjetnath Terjetnath. Yui er e with an unexplained aleph bird in the middle. Uh, e chenu or tenu, tenu. Um, those two birds, the regular pa bird. Oh, so we have the there's two pa birds, right? The one with the two wings uh, facing upwards, and one with one wing up, one wing down. In hieratic, they're always the same. The wings are always at the top. There's never the like the, the diagonal wing thing does not exist. Um, whenever you see it in a transcription where there's like a par bird with one wing up, one wing down, you know it's taken from something that was in hieroglyphs before and not in, in hieratic. Okay. When in Jehuti Khajed Nas Yeah, me, me what? Me Erbener Erbener M Mesger. Mes is spelled like this. Also, when it means to to be born or to give birth, it's also this little thing on top, and then that. Can I just ask one question? Is the um, after me is the is the woman is she a part of me or Elbol? It's a part of me, and it's really weird. Oh no, maybe it's not. It's we a... talked about this before because we saw this before. When the person you're addressing is female, they use a female determinative for it, or. This is an uh -huh. object in this case, but it's a feminine. They yeah. do. And the interesting thing is it's pronounced differently in Coptic. Um, to men, you say amu. To women, you say ame. Um, so there is a um, there is a pronunciation difference. So maybe that's what he's trying to indicate here. But I was wondering, why is he using the feminine form? But of course he is, because the seed is feminine. So yes, that makes sense. So he's really saying ame ebol. He can say that in Coptic. Ame ebol et matu en chor. It works. <laughs> it's actually perfectly good modern Coptic um, without changing a word. Kind of cool. So, Ebener, Emascher, Emascher, Mascheref. In modern, you would have to say, I guess, Pef Maashe. How do you say, how do you say ear again? Maashe, Maaje. I forgot. The exact way how it it's not very close. Um yeah. Maaje. Maaje. Maaje is mischief. Maaje. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Let's leave it here and continue in two weeks. Okay. Right. All right. Solid job. Boy, the story's weird. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to get a little bit more weird, even um, both with the the whole seed story, and then there's a part about about stone boats, and I'm just wondering why on earth, like, what what am I missing? How did they come up with that? Um, <laughs> who knows? We'll find out soon, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Great, and talk to you next week. I guess. See you next week. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye.